In Affinity Photo, if you want to distort text, there's a load of great tools to do this, but one of the most powerful ones, I think, filters and distort and deform. Now I've applied some effects already on this. I've blurred it, also I've used a style to it, and so I've just got the word text. Of course, it could be a lot of text. It could be a paragraph. It could be an entire page of text, multiple colors of text as well. But go to Filters, Distort and Deform. And then you get this very basic panel. And it is a very basic panel. In fact, you think, oh, there's not much at all. You can't do much at all. Well, it's very powerful. All you need to do is add some pins to this. And I like to add the pins all along the text itself. Now you probably can add about 50 or 60. I find if I push it too many, I think sometimes it starts to go a bit funny to suddenly the machine suddenly starts not displaying the screen properly. So I prefer just to keep it to about 30 or so. But it doesn't seem to be a limit. It doesn't come up with any errors. But it does, like I say, just suddenly you find the screen redraw doesn't seem to work. Now I'm going to use rigid for this. You can use similarity. There's an option here for similarity and that can create some really great distortions. But rigid is pretty useful as well. But rigid here and then I can add some more. OK, so I've got these pins. Just simply click. Now to select it, just click there. Now if you want to delete them, once you've selected it and you can see that double ring there. Well, just delete it by pressing the delete key. That's it. But I can now distort, so I can just drag this up. So I can just drag that T upwards and I can go down to this one and I can add another pin or I can simply select that one and drag it. You can see you can create a variety of different designs just by a couple of changes, by just moving it and dragging it. And you can drag it a little distance or quite a bit of distance. And you can see the color from there, obviously black, has been dragged out to here. But also what you can do, and you can undo it at any point as well, just do a standard undo. Control Z, Command Z or whatever. Now, what you can do, you can select all those or you can drag over those ones and so on. And you can see you end up with multiple pins that have got this double ring. And then what you do, you can drag. So as you do that, you can see you get some lovely distortions just dragging that across. And it will just run through the entire design all the way over to the other side. Now, of course, you don't have to go that way. You can go that way. You can see the T is dragged downwards or upwards or that way. So you can see you can just push it that way or that way. It'd be brilliant if there was an animation feature so you could actually store all of this as an animation. However, there isn't, unfortunately. Well, you can always go then and select some others. So I'm just going to select this one. So I'm going to push it that way and select some more. And I'm going to drag that up there, select some more. And you can see the result of that. You can literally create infinite amount of designs, it still sort of looks like the word text. If I go now to similarity, that result is not that different. But sometimes the result is just by stretching it other way, you can create some really extreme results. So rigid for this case. And then if you want to reduce down, you want say you want the thing to be a bit more like the word text, you can just reduce it down by going to the master and reduce it, say, down to 10 or 8%, you can still get some distortion at 21, 42, 100. But also, click apply. Another good thing is maybe duplicate the text before you start. So you've got that word. So you can always go back to it and combine it. So if I want to, I can just undo and I can just go to layer and duplicate. So now I've got that text. I can still use it, still behind that one. And if you don't want to use it, simply just click there. So you can see you just remove it very quickly. But I'm just going to work with this one. And I can always go to repeat deform. Obviously, I could go back into the thing and set all the pins up again. So repeat deform, and you've got that effect. But now, see one problem with this. It crops. Have to be careful. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it doesn't crop. Sometimes it does. I, you know what? I have never worked out why sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Please put in the comments below if you know of the reason why it does crop. I always think, yes, I understand it. I understand why and how to avoid it. And then next time I do it, it still crops it. So undo. What I normally do is just resize it. So let's just resize that. And again, instead of using, obviously, I just want to use one layer. I can then go to filters, repeat, deform, and you can see the distortion there. So it isn't cropped now. It hasn't gone over the edge, but it's really if the 
image goes over the edge. Now, sometimes it seems to be fine, but sometimes it doesn't. And you can see then you can just add it over the word text. You still can just about make out the word text. And of course, you can always resize. You don't have to have it the same size. And still got the word text there. Again, it's sort of lo still loosely like the word text. And you can still go to repeat to form. And you can see you get another effect there. And again, you can combine it still again slightly. Or, of course, just drag it up, put it on top to make it even clearer. You've still got the word text. So let's just put that back again like that. But also what you can do is you can then combine them. If you want to, just combine that and that. So you've still got the word text and right click, group, then go to layer and you can then rasterize. So it all becomes one layer. Now, of course, when I go to do it a few more times now, the word text is gonna be completely gone. Because another thing you can do, hold down the alter option key and drag. And that will du duplicate the layer. Now I can duplicate it obviously multiple times. I can do about three or four, but I can resize it. I can rotate it. Also, obviously the text here is black, but if you had like text that's made up of green, blue, yellows, etc., you can combine them in different ways. You can go up here to the blend modes and run through and you've got lighten, but with black, it's not so effective. So you can see you get some different effects, but it's Personally, it's not so great. So go with Lighten and select all of those. Right click and group. You always need to do that and then go to layer and rasterize if you want to turn it all into a single layer. Now with this design, you can do exactly the same as before. You can still just about make out the word text. That is completely lost now. But filters, distort and deform will use the repeat. Perfect reasonable as well. So deform, and then you can just add some pins. Now again, you can add maybe 10 or 40, maybe 50, but at a certain point, you'll suddenly notice the screen goes white on one side. I always find that anyway. I don't know why, but that just seems to be as far as you can go. But I've added a few number of pins there. And now obviously don't click apply. I quite often go and do that by accident. What you need to do is actually select them and actually apply it. Just going to do it without thinking and then just drag it. And again, you can see the result of that. Just dragging that in and out and you can create a variety. Again, you can always try similarity. Just try similarity. You might like that. Rigid. And again, you can always still use the master just to drag it back in again. So it's not maximum power. And again, select some more. And again, drag this down across that over here and then I'm going to click apply at this point. Now, this time, again, you can see it still crops. Quite often when I do that, I just resize it and then go to filters, repeat, distortion, and again, crops it. Actually, sometimes the result of when you resize it is weird. You think, oh, you know what? All it would do is make the same design later that you had before, but it doesn't always do that. Also, another thing, if you do a bit of a rotate, say, and resize and all a few transformations, then go to filters, repeat, deform, you will probably find you might. Now, this time, see what I mean? <laughs> you get the whole image. There is a logic to it. I've yet to work out totally. And also sometimes when you do a transform, that's why I wanted to show you, but it didn't do it this time. Sometimes you'll suddenly notice you get the progress bar because it takes forever once you do a little bit of a transform, a slight distortion, and then apply the repeat. It does seem to go a bit odd. Oh, you can still see a bit of crop in there. And you can drag around, obviously resize it, and now it doesn't look anything like the original text word. And of course, at any point, you can always undo, go back to your original design like that, and apply maybe other distortions, because there are other distortions, of course, more than just the filters, distort, and deform. But I think Deform is a great way of creating some interesting designs with just very basic text, word text. Again, let's just delete that. You could always go over here and you could use frame text. So frame text, just create some frame text, just like that, and then go to text, and then go down here, insert filler text. I'm obviously not gonna type all the words out, but you can see with the filler text, change the font, of course. Don't have to use Arial, that 
seems to be the default for me. And with this design, you can then apply your deforms to that as well. Filters and go down here to distort and deform. You'll notice the repeat deform isn't valid at this point. For some weird reason, that does not apply the rasterization. Don't know why that feature is not available, but it doesn't do it. If you want to apply some effects beforehand, just go to blur, say Gaussian blur, and I'm not going to go full on like that, but say like a bit of blurring, and then go to layer and down to rasterize. I like to do that approach instead of just using or relying on the filters to rasterize it. And now you'll see you've got the option here of the repeat. And then you can go to distort and deform, and then you can apply again, add a load. Now, of course, it's a lot harder to apply all around the text. But you can apply it all the way around the edge or maybe to the center. There's lots of different, or maybe apply all the pins as a sort of like a diagonal design or maybe use a cross design for your design or maybe a zigzag design. You could always go click there, click there, up, down, up, down, up, down, and so on. There's literally a thousand ways of adding these. It's a pity that there's no presets. So you could sort of have a preset here option where you could set up the pins so you can have a, like a zigzag deform or a border deform or just some presets anyway, that would be nice. But sadly, there's not. And once you've done that, again, make certain you select it before clicking apply and then you can distort your text. And again, you can select as many as you want of the pins and drag or drag it slightly through and again, select those and drag Oops, select those again. Sometimes if you don't get it exactly right, you lose access to the pins. So, and just drag that down. You can see, you can distort the text in infinite kind of ways. And again, you know, sometimes it suddenly crops it. With that, you can then, of course, resize it and hold down the alter option key again and drag that. And you can see you can create multiple text, multiple, select them all, right click and group. And with that, you can rasterize that and then go layer, rasterize, and again, use the repeat and repeat deform. And again, the result is cropped as well. I say 50% of the time, it doesn't seem to do the cropping. 50% of the time, it does unfortunately seem to crop the result. Well, I hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any theories about why it crops sometimes, why it doesn't crop other times, I would love to know. It's one of those things that I think, you know what, why? I can rasterize it, I can do this, I can do cropping and so on. And I think, yes, I've worked it out. And then other times I go to it, and I think, hmm, still does exactly the same as before. Crop sometimes, sometimes it doesn't crop. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Also, please subscribe to the channel. Always adding new tutorials about Affinity Photo, Photoshop, Rebel, and many other applications as well. Bye.